Hello, this is Lin from Row Robotics. In this video, I will show you how to control a robot to grab multiple objects. In visual components, there are three different ways to control a robot, which are the process modeling, Python programming, and the robot programming. Robot programming is an offline programming tool which allows users to control any brand or model of the robot without using actual code such as Python. For example, under the e-catalog panel, expand the model by type, scroll down and look for the robot tab. We can drag any robot that we want into the workspace. Next, click onto the program tab. We can assign different statements to control the robot from this statement list. For example, we can use the point-to-point -point motion statement to control the movement of the robot. So let's reset and run the simulation. As you can see, the robot will move from one point to another point. In this simulation, we will be using robot programming to control a robot to grab multiple objects. Now what I'm going to do is to first build the layout and then go on to the robot control. To get started, you will need to go to the e-catalog panel, expand the model by type, and then click the packaging library. We will need the box creator to create a box for us, a box sealer to seal the box, and a box wrapper to wrap the box. Next, go back to the e-catalog panel, expand the conveyor and then click visual component. We will need a sensor conveyor. A product batcher conveyor. And a product software conveyor. Next, go to the feeder. Under visual component, select the shape feeder as we need to create parts that the robot can pick and place into the box. Moving on to the robot, expand the robot tab, select visual component, and pick the robot arm. Then, go to the robot tools, under visual component, Select the parameter suction cup gripper. With the plug and place tool, we can drag the gripper close to the robot arm. And you will notice there will be a green arrow. This is to show you that the robot tool can be connected to the robot arm. Once we move the gripper closer to the robot arm, it will automatically snap together. Next, go to the robot positioner and under the visual component, select the simple robot pedestrian. It is just a simple robot stand to rise the robot arm up to a certain height. With the PNP tool, we can again snap the robot arm to the pedestrian easily. So now let's connect the conveyors. We can drag the sensor conveyor towards the box creator and they will both snap together. The length of the sensor conveyor might be too short. Let's change it to 3000mm. Moving on, let's also connect the box sealer and the box wrapper. Alright, so now let's move the robot closer to the production line. Now, let's connect the shape feeder to the product sorter conveyor and the product batcher conveyor. By holding the control key and click on each of the components, we can move all the components together closer to the robot arm. Let's slightly adjust the position of the robot arm. Alright, now we have done the entire layout of the process line.
To continue, we will need to connect the signal from the battery conveyor and the sensor conveyor to our robot, which is similar to connecting the input and output ports of a sensor in our real life. So let's select the signal checkbox, click on the robot, and here is the input and output ports of the robot. Then, we will need to connect the sensor boolean signal from the sensor conveyor to the input of the robot. So when there is any object detected by the sensor, the signal will be sent to the robot. We just need to drag the circle and connect the wire to the robot. In order to control the conveyor to start or stop, we will need to connect the start-stop signal of the conveyor to the output of the robot. Moving forward, we will need to connect the batch ready signal from the batcher conveyor to the input of the robot to tell the robot that the object is ready to be picked and connect the start-stop signal to the output of the robot so that we can have control over the conveyor. We can also change the port number for example to 50 by double-click on it. And now, all the signal connections are done. Just click the signal checkbox again to exit the signal connection panel. Alright, so let us try and run the simulation. And let me speed up the simulation a bit. Let's stop the simulation here. And you will notice that the batcher conveyor only accepts 3 objects at a time. So let's click on the batcher conveyor to change the batch size to 9 so that it allows 9 objects to enter the conveyor. Now, let's reset and run the simulation again. Now, there's another problem here. The object size is too big and it will block other objects from entering the conveyor. So, what we can do is to change the dimension of the object from the shape feeder. Let's click on the shape feeder under the product params. Let's change all the dimension to be 200mm. Let's reset the simulation and change both of the conveyor width to be 700mm. And now, let's run the simulation again. Let's stop the simulation. Now you can notice that there are 9 objects enter the conveyor, but there are gaps between the objects. So what we can do is click on the sorter conveyor. Under the positions, click the open in editor by index. Then, change the value from negative 200 up to 200. This is because the width of the object is 200. Therefore, it will be positive 200 and negative 200 offset from the center of the conveyor in the y-axis direction. Let's close the editor and run the simulation again. And it works the way we want. Before we start the robot programming, we will need to first define the tool frame of the robot to tell the robot that there's a tool attached to it. So let's go to the program tab, select the job tool and click the robot. In the job panel, there's a tool option. Expand it and you will see different tool options. You will notice that there's a gripper TCP option at the bottom there. However, for our simulation, we will go for 2-1. So select the 2-1 and click the setting icon next to it. So with the two properties panel, we can now adjust the tool frame of the robot by using the snap tool and snap it to the center of the gripper tool. Now, there are too many sections on the gripper tool. Since we are picking a 3 by 3 object, so let's click the gripper tool. Under the component properties, let's change the suction number to be 3 by 3. And the distance between the suction should be 200mm. To control the robot, we will need to access the program tab and click on the robot. This program editor panel will be the place where we program our robot. First. What we want to do is to stop the sensor conveyor when the box has been detected by the sensor. So, 
click on the wait for binary statement. Make sure that the input port is 0 as we have connected the sensor conveyor signal to input port 0 of the robot. We will need to click on the input value checkbox so that the waiting input value will be true. Then to stop the conveyor, we will click on the set binary output statement to set port 0 to be false. Let's run the simulation and see if the sensor conveyor will stop when the box reach the sensor. Let me speed up the simulation a bit and yes, it will stop at the sensor. Alright, so let's stop and reset the simulation. So moving on, we want to pick the object from the batcher conveyor. We can add a new sequence for picking motion by clicking the Add Sequence button. So inside the new sequence, we will first need to wait the batcher conveyor to send a signal to tell the robot that the batch of 3x3 object has arrived at the conveyor. So we will need to click on the Wait for Binary Input Statement and set port 50 to be true by clicking the Input Value checkbox. This is because we have connected the batcher conveyor signal to port 50 of the robot. And we are going to use the wait trigger checkbox here, so we will wait for a signal event. Then the robot will evaluate the value of the signal connected to the port 50. If it's true, it will get an event or update the signal has changed. Then the robot will know the batch is ready. Alright, so let's put a hot statement to stop the simulation when the batcher conveyor sensor has sent a signal to the robot. Moving on, in order to let the pick statement to run, we will need to call the pick statement inside the main statement. So let's run the simulation and see what will happen. This simulation does not stop even when the batch has reached the conveyor. So this is because we forgot to change the post batch task of the conveyor. So let's change it to batch signal to robot and rerun the simulation again. And yes, the simulation stopped now. So now, let's control the robot to pick the batch. With the job tool, click on the purple circle and drag it to the center of the batch. Then, let's save this position as a linear position. Let's also create an initial position before it comes and pick the batch as a point motion and a final position after it picked the batch as a linear position. So the robot will first move to point 2, then move linearly to pick the batch and move linearly upward to point 3. Now, if you want to pick the batch, we will need to click the set binary output signal statement and set port 1 to be true. We can click on the robot, expand the action configurations, under the output, select 1, and you will see that when the output port 1 is set to true, the robot will grab and release when false. Alright, so let's delete the host statement, reset and run the simulation again and see what will happen. And yes, the robot will pick the object, but it only picks one. So what we need to do is click on the robot, under the signal actions, check the multi grabs checkbox, then expand the action configurations, under output, select one, and under the detection volume, change it to 300 by 300. The 300 value here is from positive 300 to negative 300. So the total area will be 600 by 600 which is the same as our batch area. So if there's any object within this detection volume, all the object will be picked up at once. Let's reset and run the simulation again. And yes, it picks up all the object together. Moving on, we want to move the batch into the box. Again with the jog tool, we can drag the purple circle and align it to the center of the box.
notice that the box is too small. We can click on the box creator and change the dimension of the box. Let's reset and run the simulation again. And yes, the dimension of the box changed. Alright, so now let's again create a new sequence for place. Then drag the purple circle again and align it to the center of the box. Notice that the batch now is below of the box. Let's drag the x-axis arrow, the blue arrow, and move the entire object upwards. And let's save this as our initial position before placing the batch into the box. Now, let's move the batch into the box. Let's zoom in the batch. Select the align tool, click on the center of the batch and align it to the surface of the box. Then, close the Align panel and save this as our linear motion. So now, we need to release the batch. Remember to release the batch, we will need to set the output port 1 to be false. Next, let's also set the final position after the robot has released the object. So click on to point 5. As you can see, the robot will go back to point 5 position. Then click the linear motion statement and drag the statement to the bottom of the statement list. So now, the robot will first move to point 5, then move linearly downward to release the batch, and then move linearly upward back to point 7. Don't forget to call the play sequence in the main sequence by changing the routine to place. Next, we want the sensor conveyor to continue moving after we place the batch. Therefore, we will need to start the sensor conveyor by setting port 0 to true. Now, Let's try to change the type of the box to match the batch. So let's reset the simulation and click on the home tab. Under the e-catalog, search for box, then select the folding box. Let's change the dimension of the new folding box to be 610 for both the length and width and 210 for the height. Next, go to the process tab and select the product tab. Inside the product type editor, click the plus icon and add a new flow group. Then let's also add a new product type inside the flow group. Inside the properties panel, select the yellow icon and click onto the new folding box. Let's rename it as VS Folding Box. Moving on, click onto the box creator. Under the product creator, change the part to VS Folding Box. Now, let's run the simulation again. And yep, the box has changed. All right. So now we will need to redo the placement of the batch. So let's go back to the program tab, select the robot and go to the play sequence. Let's add a hot statement after point 0.5 and rerun the simulation. So now let's again click onto the align tool and zoom in the batch. Then, align the center of the batch to the folding box. Next, save this as a new linear position and move the statement below the hot statement and delete the old linear position statement as well. So now, let's delete the hot statement and rerun the simulation again. Now, there's an issue. The small boxes does not move with the folding box. 
This is because of the gravity setting of the robot arm. So, what we need to do now is click onto the robot. Under the actions configuration, select the output S1 and you will see there's a gravity direction. The robot uses the gravity direction by releasing the object. The object will be moved down in a distance value of 25 and whatever the objects collide with, it will then attach to the component. Because we want the boxes attached to the folding box, therefore, we will set the gravity direction to be a small value such as 0.2 mm. Alright, so now let's reset the simulation and run again. And yep, the boxes will move with the folding box. But now we can see that the entire process stopped and the small boxes does not flow into the batcher conveyor. What is happening here is because when there's 9 objects enter the batcher conveyor, the conveyor will stop. Therefore, we need to start the conveyor again. Remember that we have connected the start stop signal of the batcher conveyor to port 50 of the robot. So now, let's go to the pick sequence and set port 50 to be true at the bottom of the sequence list. And also, in order to let the entire process to keep running, we will go to the main sequence and use the while loop to loop the entire statements. Let's add a 5 seconds delay at the bottom of the statement list so that the entire process can have a delay before it continues to the next process. Now, let's reset and run the simulation again. As you can see, there's a path tracking of the robot. To disable this, let's go to the action configuration of the robot and select port 50. Remember, we have made the port 50 to be true to start the batcher conveyor. At the same time, the trace function will be turned on as the setting here has set the trace to turn on when true. Therefore, we can just select the empty option for both on true and on false. Let's reset and run the simulation again. And yes, now the entire simulation is done and it works perfectly fine. The entire simulation can not only be done by a single type of robot, instead, we can also use different brand of the robot. So for example, we are using Ipsum robot arm here to do the simulation for us. Besides, we can even use different type of the robot. For example, we are using a Scara robot instead of a robot arm to do the simulation for us. In short, Visual Components actually provides a lot of different model and type of the robot for us to do our simulation and we can have fully control over all the robots and machine from it. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.